fellowship, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together again, O oh Lord. We ask that your spirit will dominate our minds, our intellect, our understanding. Let your spirit bring illumination. Let, it, let him bring light. Let him bring understanding. We ask him to touch our hearts, our minds, our souls, our intellect, our will. O oh Lord, give us strength. Give us understanding, O oh Lord. Give us peace. Give us love. Give us hope. Give us joy. Lord, we love you. We, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We honor you. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. Because we realize it's not by might, it's not by power. It's not by our own strength, but it's by your strength. It's by your power. It's by your anointing, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, we're not doing it for our own benefit, but for the benefit that for others that they will come to know you as the only true God. And Jesus Christ as the son that you have sent. So Father, we ask your strength and power. Yes, Lord. Touch us again anew. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is a special yes. session that we are having. Yes. And we thank God for the opportunity to speak his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I'd like to look at Exodus chapter 33 from verse 12. Hallelujah. 12 to 23, Exodus 33, from verse 12. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We tell the Holy Spirit we are nothing. We can't do anything for ourselves. So we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. We tell Him we are nothing. So God's love. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So now we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, Please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, shall stand on the rock. So it shall be, while my glory pass by, that I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hands while I pass by. Then I will take away my hands, and you shall see my back. But my face shall not be seen. Hallelujah. Nobody can see God face to face and live. Nobody. The only thing that we can approach God, as I said many times, is through Jesus Christ. He's the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Because of grace, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your glory. Show me your glory. I want to see your face. I want to see, I want to see you in your fullness. Right now we see we see God in the glass darkly. That's what that's what we read in in First Corinthians chapter thirteen. We we see him in a, in the glass darkly. We know in part. We teach in part. We prophesy in part. But then face to face, a time is going to come when God is going to give us the ability to see him face to face, when we, when he transform this body. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The natural man cannot 
we see the things of God because they're spiritually discerned. So it is with the body. The natural body cannot stand in God's presence. Mm -hmm. we, we need a spiritual body and also we need a spiritual mindset, a spiritual mind. Our spirit must be renewed. Our soul must be renewed. We must become totally spiritual so we can comprehend God. Because to stand in God's presence means that you will begin to see Him. Because you see, the Bible says that we shall be like Him, or we shall see Him as He is. We don't know what state we are going to be. We don't know how we are going to be. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. We cannot fathom that spiritual perspective fully as yet. Because we, we have not seen it in our natural eyes. I was thinking the other day about the spirit, a spirit, and a soul. You cannot see your own spirit. You have a spirit in you. You have a soul in you, but you can't see them. But you know they are there. You are self-aware. You have self-awareness. You have a personality. You can reason. You can imagine. You have memory. You have understanding. And you, you have... Joy, you have peace, you have long suffering, mm -hmm. you have faith, mm -hmm. you have the goodness of God. Yep. All these things are spiritual like attributes, mm -hmm. the gift of the spirit, but are the fruit of the spirit, but you don't see them like a bodily form. Right. You see their actions or you see their reactions or you see their or they like what they achieve or what they do. Mm -hmm. But you don't actually see. But the Bible says, by this side, all men know you are my disciples when you have love one for another. So what is love? Love is something that is demonstrated. Love is something that is depicted. Love is some, something that is done. You, you can't say, like, see love. You see its actions. I see its reactions. I see its benefits. I see its fruits. So, so these things are, are spiritual. But the Holy Spirit gives us understanding of these things. Even though you don't see it, you still know. You still have a, a like a deep conviction inside of you about about these things. God is light. The reason why God told Moses, nobody can see me, because he's a consuming fire. If if Moses had seen God, he would have to die. He would die. Even though, even though Moses found grace in the sight of God, even though Moses was Considered to be a child of God, he could not see God in his fullness, in his physical state. The natural man cannot, or let's say the, a finite man cannot comprehend an infinite God. And only through Jesus Christ that we can approach God. And we, and we thank God because he sent his son into the world to be our savior. To come down to this earth, to take on humanity, to be, to be the eternal sacrifice of our sin. So many times we consider the work that Jesus has done, but we don't consider the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself also condescended to our level in that he, he came to dwell. He came to be in us and be with us forever. You imagine a holy, righteous God have to let's say sometimes put up with our indifferences mm -hmm. our stubbornness mm -hmm. our shortcomings but we still grieve at the Holy Spirit yeah. because but the Holy Spirit have sealed us until the day of redemption but we grieve him mm -hmm. we disobey him yeah. we don't listen to him sometimes we go our own way but he's patient and he he sometimes he's quiet but he speaks firmly and he speaks like let's say he speaks with emphasis mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't even hear him no. you know the Holy Spirit doesn't really get angry and full of wrath and destroy us mm -hmm. because he's he's long suffering mm -hmm. if this is talking about the Father also applies to the, to the Holy Spirit and also applies to the Son. So if God the Father is long-suffering, it means the Holy Spirit is long-suffering also. Yep. He's tender. He's loving. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is love. Yep. 
God is love. As I said, when we started out, we said that God is love, God is light, and God is spirit. And if God is spirit, it means that His spirit is love. And if God is light, it means that His spirit is light. And if God is, is light, it means that His light is love. So, they correlate with each other. And, and, it, and the same attributes are is in one, it's in all. So, when we look at God, God's love is the Father's love. And the Son is the one that actually demonstrated it by coming to die. And the Holy Spirit is one that commutes it to us. So, you see, we have the Father's declaration that He's love, but, but Christ meritoriously proves it or displays it. By his death, by his dying for our sins, Amen. by being the penalty for our sins, and the Holy Spirit comes and takes that love and shut it about in our hearts, Hallelujah. applies it. Mm-hmm. So we, we have the, the full benefit of the Godhead. Yeah. That word light in the Greek is phos, mm-hmm. and that is like phosphorus. Phosphorus mm-hmm. means something that glows, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's an element, but Fast is light. And O-R, O-W-R, Hebrew, light. And, and we see that it signifies life. Why darkness signifies death. So, God's love has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So, God's love have illuminated our minds. His Spirit illuminates our minds. Uh, the light, uh, the light of God, which is the Holy Spirit, illuminates our minds. It brings clarity of thought. It brings understanding. See, it, it drives away the darkness of doubt and unbelief. If there's no light, we won't be able to see. We won't be able to comprehend. We won't be able, be able to understand. We'll be walking in darkness. That means that we'll be stumbling around, constantly falling. But we can walk in newness of life, and, and then you have confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, there's one thing about darling, it takes away your confidence. It brings fear. Yep. You're uncertain because you can't see. Mm-hmm. But when there's light, mm-hmm. you have more confidence. Another thing about, about light and sunlight, especially, it gives you a, a feeling of like exuberance. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes when it's dark and dreary, you get depressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You you weight it down, but light gives you that like mm-hmm. lightness, yes. that freedom. Yeah. The same with the spirit. Where the spirit of God is, there's liberty, mm-hmm. there's freedom of worship, mm-hmm. there's freedom of fellowship. Yes. It takes away all of that anguish mm-hmm. and confusion, mm-hmm. hatred, discomfort. Yeah. We are seeing now darkly mm-hmm. through this glass. It means that our understanding has not been fully developed about God. They think there are many things about God that we don't fully understand. Yeah. There are discrepancies. Mm-hmm. There are misunderstandings. Mm-hmm. But there's coming a time where we, be, where we will be able to see him face to face. And that was what Moses was asking for. He said, show me your glory. Mm-hmm. He said, I will make all my goodness passage for you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And it's not that he will not be able to see. We will be able to see, but not now. There's a time. You see, God has a timing for everything. And there's one thing about when it, when it comes to God, none of us will go ahead of the other. The reason why God was also making this statement, because Christ had not come into the world as yet. Christ had not been revealed in the flesh as yet. Mm-hmm. He had not died for our sins as yet. Mm-hmm. So God was waiting until Christ fulfilled mm-hmm. the plan and purpose that he had for him right. by coming to die for our sins. Mm-hmm. So now, revelation of God mm-hmm. can only come through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. Faith in what? Our faith in who? Faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Faith in his work. Mm-hmm. Faith in the person. Yep. So if Christ does not fulfill God's plan, our salvation is in vain. So how can we see God? How can we know God? 
it is only when we will be totally transformed into Christ's image and glorified that we will be able to see God face to face. It's only then. And it's verse 12. And let's actually read, let's read from verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see, see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. See, we know in part. When Christ comes and we see him, we can see him in his fullness. We won't need any eyes of faith anymore. Because now uh, the spiritual eyes would have been opened. As I said, we don't see our spirit now. We don't see our soul. But I, I suppose that if we were totally spirit, living the spirit realm, we would be able to see we we would be able to see each other spirit. So that's what it's gonna be. But right now we all we can see, we have eyes to see natural things. But we see spiritual things through faith. Mm -hmm. And faith is a concept. Right. Faith is a principle. Mm -hmm. An ability to comprehend God or spiritual things by the power of God. Mm -hmm. Or like an understanding. Mm -hmm. But it is not a person. No. You don't, you, I guess you could personify faith if you were speaking about Jesus. Jesus right. If you say that he is faith. Yes. yes. Okay. But, mm -hmm. but even so, we cannot see Jesus. Right. Even though he, he has a body, he's in the heavenly realms. So we, we see him by faith. But Moses says, Lord, show me your glory. Show me yourself. Which is a good thing. A good desire. That I may know him, Paul say. I want to know him. Moses wanted to know. He says, who is going to go? And if, and if you don't go with us, if you personally don't go with us, don't take us. So God told Moses in Exodus 30, 320, no one can see me and live. Mm -hmm. Consider this fact, no man has ever seen God at any time in the fullness of his glory. Nobody. Even on the Mount of Transfiguration, as I said before, Peter and John had a, a brief glimpse right. Right. when he was transfigured. They, they saw her a brief glimpse of his glory. Yeah. And the Bible said that his garment was brighter than the midday sun. Mm. But and immediately they fell to the ground as dead. Let's, let's look at John chapter 17 for a minute. Just a minute. 17, 24. And he just made this statement. He said, Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name. And I will declare it. That the love which, with which you love me may be in them and I in them. So Jesus is making a prayer. He said, Father, my desire is that those that you have given me, that they also be with me so that they can see my glory. My glory, mm -hmm. which you have given me, mm -hmm. that means his exalted nature. Mm -hmm. The glory that he had with the Father from the beginning. Yep. So that means that nobody living mm -hmm. have ever seen Christ in his glory. No. His fullness of his fullness of his glory. Nobody. Mm -hmm. But one day we will be able to see him yeah. as he really is. Yeah. See, now we're just seeing him by faith. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we love him for who he is yes. by faith. Amen. And we appreciate him by faith. Mm -hmm. And what he has done for us. Yes. That assurance mm -hmm. and that feeling of like worth. Uh, feeling of like, acceptance. Mm -hmm. Feeling of forgiveness. You know, your sins have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. So you feel at peace. Mm -hmm. You have love. You have compassion Amen. and you have communion. Hmm. So you feel, you feel good within yourself. Yes, yes. Knowing that it is Christ. It is God that has done these things for you. Hallelujah. And you worship him in spirit and in truth. Like Moses experience, we are only allowed a glimpse of his backside. Like Moses experience, we are only, we are only allowed a glimpse of his backside. 
A little glimpse of his glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness, see, pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Then he made a statement. This is, this is a statement of absolute fact mm -hmm. and truth. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. God prerogative is that he is going to give grace to whoever he chooses. Mm -hmm. Nobody have a right to receive God's, mm -hmm. God's grace. Mm -hmm. Ah, his mercy. mercy. Ah, his compassion. Mm -hmm. God prerogative that he, he gives it to whom he chooses. Okay, Let's look at Exodus 24, 16 for a minute. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire. See that? On the top of the mountain, in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Isaiah had asked a question. Who shall be able to stand among the divine fire. <laughs> or who mm -hmm. shall be able to dwell with the everlasting burning? <laughs> who? Isaiah 33, 14 and 15. Who among us? Mm -hmm. But here is Moses. Not only was he able to go mm -hmm. up in the mountain mm -hmm. that was in the sight of of the Israelite, mm -hmm. like fire yep. on top of the mountain, mm -hmm. Moses went up there and was able to dwell for 40 days and 40 nights right. because God allowed it. He had to be right in, in belief, mm -hmm. faith, mm -hmm. obedience. Mm -hmm. He had to be washed, yeah. had to be cleansed, mm -hmm. He had to be worthy. Mm -hmm. It means that he had to be a redeemed mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I said, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious yes. to. And I have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So mm -hmm. Moses has experienced it. So he can dwell. He can go. But he did not see God fully. <laughs> fully remember, it says that there was darkness upon him out. Mm -hmm. Darkness. A cloud covered it six, six days. And on the seventh day he come. He called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. So Moses was seeing God not clearly, mm -hmm. but dimly. Just like we see him dimly now. Yeah, yeah. He had a knowledge of God, but not the full knowledge of him. Because That's why he asked God later, show me your glory. He had some, but he wanted more. Right. So it proved that he did not see him fully. He could not. And actually... It was Moses, and it was Joshua that went up into the mount. Mm -hmm. But there were also some of the elders that went up, but they had to stay, stay back. Mm -hmm. they, they did not go totally all the way up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Joshua was left back too. Mm -hmm. Moses went a little bit further. So we thank God. Amen. Now we can, we can approach him. By faith. We can approach on the tool of grace. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Because of Jesus. Yes. Because of the work has been done. Yes, amen. He has gone before and opened up the way. Mm -hmm. He opened up the way that we can go in. Oh, yes. That we can come boldly to the tool of grace. Mm -hmm. There's no fear now. Hallelujah. God is a consuming fire. Yes. You see, men, men today, they are indifferent. And they are rebellious. Mm -hmm. and, they are, and they think that they are like... In charge of, of something. They are obnoxious. They don't fear God. But God is a consuming fire. How do we see God's wrath? In calamities. And the natural man don't even think that it's God that is at work. It's, they don't see God's hands in, in like calamity. So they'll, they'll uh, say, oh, that's, that, that's life. So it doesn't move them to repent. 
nobody has experienced God's full wrath. Mm -hmm. Just like you have not experienced his full glory. Yeah. No more have I seen God's full wrath. But only Christ. Mm -hmm. Only Christ has experienced God's full wrath or God's wrath in its fullness. Only Christ mm -hmm. for our sins right. on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So that we won't have to. But these ones that do not repent, mm -hmm. eventually they will. Hebrews 12, 18 to 21. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burn with fire mm -hmm. and to blackness and darkness and tempest mm -hmm. and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words mm -hmm. so that those who heard it beg that the words should not be spoken to them anymore. Mm -hmm. For they could not endure what was commanded. Mm -hmm. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned a shot with an arrow. Mm -hmm. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and mm -hmm. trembling. Mm -hmm. But you have come to Mount Zion, mm -hmm. to the city of the living God, mm -hmm. the heavenly Jerusalem, mm -hmm. to, a, to an innumerable company of angels, mm -hmm. to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, mm -hmm. who are registered in heaven, to God, mm -hmm. the judge of all, to spirits of just men made perfect, mm -hmm. to Jesus the mediator, as a new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speak better things than Abel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see now, Amen. we have come to the new Jerusalem. Amen. We have come to Mount Zion. Yes. The heavenly Jerusalem. Hallelujah. This is where we, are, we have mm -hmm. been brought to that place. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ, Christ. Through his blood. Through the mediator of the new covenant. Mm -hmm. He says to the general assembly, and church of the firstborn. Amen. He says to an innumerable company of angels. Yes, and they cannot number them. <laughs> to the judge of all. Hallelujah. To God, the judge of all. That's where we're going to go. Amen. So now we see Christ by faith, then face to face. <laughs> In our present state, there's always a cloud or a veil covering God's face. <laughs> There's always a cloud covering his face. Even, even in that, we still have a knowledge of him. Yeah. It is better than the Jews that are still blinded. Because the gospel is still veiled to them. Mm -hmm. There are many people that the gospel is veiled to still. Mm -hmm. But at least we have an understanding. Mm -hmm. At least we have a revelation. Yes. At, at least we have our minds illuminated. Mm -hmm. At least we can comprehend. Yeah. At least we can understand. Mm -hmm. And that is the benefit. Hallelujah. I want to transition to mm -hmm. arguments against this free will. Mm -hmm. Free will. God's love mm -hmm. versus man's free will. Yeah. As man will say, free will. What is free will? Mm -hmm. John chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 6 because I want to mention the word light. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Mm -hmm. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. That all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, of the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. That was the true light, mm -hmm. which gave light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, mm -hmm. and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Mm -hmm. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So, salvation is not by free will, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. That's the first point. Now, let's read Galatians chapter 3 verse 5 to 9. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and work miracles among you, does he do it by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the generous by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham before seeing in you all the nations, shall be blessed. 
So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing in Abraham. So we see that salvation is by faith, by believing in God, not by free will. And you don't choose to believe in God. God gave you the ability to believe in him. You don't have the capability to believe in him. Because he says it's not by working of the law. It is not by works of righteousness. You know, you cannot study. You cannot study the Bible. You cannot study any philosophy. You cannot study any book. And then just of your natural inclination and understanding come to knowledge of God. You will you will have understanding, but not the true understanding. Right. You will not be you will not it will not impart faith to you like that. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by you receiving the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know it, when it says faith comes by hearing, faith comes by actually like receiving. God Isaiah says, "Who have believed our report? Who have believed what they have heard from us? Who will believe what I'm saying to them now?" If you believe what I'm saying to you, and you accept it as truth, truth of truth of the gospel, truth, truth of God speaking, or truth, mm -hmm. truly God's word, and you accept it, and you believe it, then you will get faith. It. So it's not by just hearing a song. Mm -hmm. You must contemplate. Mm -hmm. You must think about it. Mm -hmm. You must reason. And so it says in Isaiah chapter 1, Verse 18 and 19, he said, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. So though your sins be scarlet, you can be white as snow. Though your sins be red like crimson, you know, they can be white as wool. You have to reason. So when you hear the word of God, you must contemplate. But how do you get that contemplation? It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. He gives you the ability to. To analyze. So faith is not blind, as people think. Faith needs conviction. Faith needs to prove itself, or to, to demonstrate its worth. And it's something that you grab onto. Because faith is something that you latch onto. Because faith attracts you by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is an attractive force. And it, it activates belief in you. It activates trust in you. And actually it activates love in you. The love that God has shed about in you comes alive. True faith. Yep. It now have like evidence. Hmm. Because you need evidence. Yep. Nothing is truthful unless it can be verified. Nothing. What is truth? It has to be proven. And God proved himself. That's why he said God demonstrated love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God proved his love. Yep. God didn't just say I'm love. Mm -hmm. And then leave it up to you to, to, to scratch your head and wonder how and why and where. Yep. He proved it. He demonstrated it. Christ came and died for our sins. Amen. The sinless one for the sinner. Yeah. Galatians 4, 28 to 31. Let's go to chapter 4, 28 to 31. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bond woman and her son, for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not chosen of the bond woman, but of the free. Mm -hmm. Isaac was persecuted, harassed by Ishmael. Yeah. That's what it says there. But as he who born according to flesh, which is Ishmael, mm -hmm. persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Mm -hmm. We are born of the spirit. And who is persecuting us? Mm -hmm. Satan. The world. Mm -hmm. Your friends that have not accepted Christ. Yeah. So we are being persecuted. Yeah. We are being ridiculed. Mm -hmm. We are being called all kinds of names. Mm -hmm. Isaac went through it. Christ went through it. We are also going to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fact. It so, nevertheless, we know that we shall overcome. Mm -hmm. Because we are born of the Spirit. Don't worry what the enemy is doing. Mm -hmm. 
Hold on. So now let's go back now to Romans chapter 9. For I could wish that I myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelite. So Paul is saying that his countrymen, according to the flesh, are Israelite. They mean that they are of the seed of Abraham. Israelite. And he's talking about the whole nation in general. But he's, so he's talking about my fellow countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelite, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of law, the service of God, and the promises, of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, came Christ, who is over all the eternally blessed God. Amen. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect. For they are not all Israel who are of Israel. Now are they all children because they are of the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. That is those who are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as seed. Remember, seed are the child of the bondwoman persecuted Isaac who was the seed or child of the promise. As they are doing to us now. Mm -hmm. The world, many times people say that everybody is a child of God. Mm -hmm. They are child of God from the perspective that he created them, yes, mm -hmm. but not ch children of God according to the promise. No. And the, only the children according to the promise are counted as seed, mm -hmm. are counted as heirs. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a difference between uh, a child of natural progenity and one of promise yeah. when it comes to God. Because God elects, he selects out of those ones mm -hmm. a special people. Yeah. He, there's a special calling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is given to some and not to all. That's what he's talking about here. Yeah. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. Mm -hmm. For this is the word of promise. This is what God promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. He said, at this time, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, mm -hmm. not of works, but of him who calls, it was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob, I have love, but Esau, I have hated. Remember he told Moses, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious to, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Mm -hmm. That is what he's saying here. Mm -hmm. He said, Jacob, have I love? Esau, have I hated? What then shall we say? Or what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Surely not. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it's not of him who wills, not of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to, to the Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills, see that? And he, on whom he wills, he hardens. Yeah. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? Why does he find fault? Because mm -hmm. who has resisted his will? Who can resist God's will? Mm -hmm. So why is he finding fault? Mm -hmm. Then Paul got to answer you. Mm -hmm. He said, but indeed, oh man, who are you yeah. to reply against God? Mm -hmm. Who are you to question God? Will the thing found say to him who found it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have power over the clay? From the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor. What if God wanted to show his wrath and then make his power known, endure with much long suffering, the vessel of wrath, prepare for destruction, and that he might make known the wisdom of his glory and the vessel of mercy which he had prepared 
beforehand for glory, even us, whom he called, not of Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So remember, remember, John 1, 13, it says that, who were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. And what is Roman 9, what is Roman 9, 16 say? So that is not of him who wills, not of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. So it's not by your working. It is not by your doing. Amen. It is not by your free will. Amen. It is by God who calls mm -hmm. and by God who shows mercy. mercy. So we're comparing God's love mm -hmm. versus free will. Mm -hmm. So now, unless the Spirit of God performed the first work of grace in a sinner's heart, man remained disordered. Man remained a sinner in God's sight. Man remain in God's sight without any form, mm -hmm. any spiritual life, yeah. any understanding, mm -hmm. and he's under the darkness and power of sin. Unless the Spirit of God performs the first work of grace in the sinner's heart, man remains in the sight of God without form and vibe, a spiritual life mm -hmm. and understanding, under the darkness of the power of sin. Remember, we, we read a scripture in Luke 14, 23. Mm -hmm. Luke 14, 23. And I mentioned it last Sunday. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. So that's why we preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are in treating people. We are compelling them. Yeah. Compel means to... To force, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to entreat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to state like emphatically mm -hmm. that you must repent, right. that you must come to Christ, mm -hmm. that it is by grace that you are saved, mm -hmm. but you must believe in and trust in God. Mm -hmm. You must you must repent, mm -hmm. or you will perish, because the wisdom of sin is death, but God's gift is eternal life. Mm -hmm. So God speaks His word. To draw us to him. Mm -hmm. Not by might. Mm -hmm. It's not by power. But it's by his spirit. His spirit draws. Mm -hmm. No one can come unto him. Unless the spirit draws them. Amen. Draws them. So the spirit has drawn us. Mm -hmm. But he also commissioned us to preach the gospel. Amen. So now what is free will? Mm -hmm. And we can look at it from a, how, the, how the dictionary that defines it. According to the dictionary. Free will is defined as freedom of humans to make choices. That are not determined by prayer causes or by divine intervention or voluntary or spontaneous. Now this statement doesn't make any sense spiritually, theologically, but it would probably make sense philosophically. Because what they're saying is that free will is defined as freedom of humans to make choices. The make choices that are not determined by prior causes or by divine intervention, I'm given to myself the ability to just spontaneously make a choose a choosing of doing something that is right, which is impossible. Because what is right? What is what is truth? What is good? I myself do not know what is good from God's perspective. From my perspective, I might have a a classification. Of an area or an attitude or a behavior or achievement that I would consider to be good. Mm -hmm. But from God's perspective, it is, it is abominable. It's obnoxious. Mm -hmm. So, how can I make a choice mm -hmm. that is devoid of mm -hmm. divine intervention mm -hmm. or cause? Mm -hmm. God himself is the first cause. Yeah. Consider that God is a first cause of everything. The Bible said that all things were made by him, and without him there was nothing made that was made. Yeah. That's what he said. In him was life, and his life was led of men. Mm -hmm. So how can you say that you can make a choice 
independent of God. Where he is the one that gives life. And he was life. And his life was laid of men. If there is no life that comes from God, there will be no existence. So everything I do must go back to the first cause. I must give credit to God for everything. Yeah. And everything give thanks. God, it's the will of God concerning you. Hallelujah. I cannot do any of myself. Mm -hmm. I cannot even breathe of myself. No. So what makes me think that my will has the ability to make, even to make myself breathe? Mm -hmm. I cannot will myself to breathe. Mm -hmm. If God did not breathe into me the breath of life, I would be not be able to be a living soul. So spiritually speaking, he also has enlightened my mindset. Mm -hmm. He has quickened me to life, yes. spiritual life, so that I can see. He has opened my eyes mm -hmm. that I can see. The eyes of my understanding have been opened, yeah. have been enlightened, Hallelujah. that I can see and understand, Amen. and I can comprehend. Mm -hmm. The natural man cannot receive the things of God. No. So there must be a divine intervention. Yep. So consider that God is the first cause of everything. That can be possible. That can be possible. And the last cause of every consequence. He causes everything. Or makes everything possible. And then he has the last say. In the consequences of the outcome. He's the first cause and the last cause. Mm -hmm. Everything relies upon God. Depends upon God. Because if he doesn't give. Life. Yeah. There will be no motion. There'll be no thinking. There'll be no doing. Mm -hmm. There'll be no willing. Oh. Man may get to make a choice, but he does not get to determine the consequences of his action. Mm -hmm. I can choose something, but I cannot determine, I cannot predetermine the consequences mm -hmm. or the outcome. I can want, mm -hmm. I can maybe consider or mm -hmm. uh, have an idea what would be the outcome. But I cannot cons control consequences. Because my, the outcome might be beneficial to me, mm -hmm. but it might be hurtful to somebody else. Yeah. It might set in motion mm -hmm. a chain of events that I cannot stop or control. Right. One action sets in motion circumstances that bring about a lot of devastation. Mm -hmm. Like one little spark can set a whole mouth in a blaze. Yep. And the Bible said the tongue. The tongue mm -hmm. is like an unruly member. Mm -hmm. One word hmm. causes so much destruction. Yes. One word. Yes. It sets a blaze a whole yep. event of things. Yep. One word. And when a word is spoken, it cannot be withdrawn. So you're going to say, well, I spoke and that was my mind. <laughs> and that's why I believe. And what is, this is what I want to say. But one word can cause tremendous yeah. hurt and pain. Yeah. So we got to be careful what we say. So you make a choice, but you don't get to determine the consequences. Now let's look at some synonyms, synonyms for free will. It means self-imposed, uncoerced, unforced, volitional, voluntary, willing. Those are adjectives. They are adjectives describing an action. Describing a response, mm. describing what free will is, uncoerced, no, meaning that nobody don't force you, unforced, volitional, volitional to do with your will to choose, the ability to choose, voluntary. Mm. You're going to say, I voluntarily choose to be here today. Yes, I volunteer, I voluntarily choose to be here, but I could not predetermine. Any event or circumstance that could hinder me from being here. There are many things that could have stopped me from being here. Only, only by God's grace I can be here today. So it is not my will that caused it. 
It's not my feel that causes it. I choose, but my choosing is dependent upon other circumstances that can either hinder or like be an asset towards it. So it, those things are not in my hands, are out of my control. So nouns or free will is autonomy. Autonomy like self-rule, as I will say, will, choice, volition. I like volition, as I said, to do a choosing, a choice. Now, if I use it in a sentence like free will, he gave a free will offering to the children's orphanage. I gave a free will offering to a children's orphanage. Let's say I use that in a sentence. But what is the free will offering? Is it determined by me? But, but let's go back to the definition of free will. Free will is defined as freedom of humans to make choices that are not determined by prior causes. So how can I give a free will offering to an orphanage that I have no knowledge of? How can I do something that I have no knowledge of? That I am not aware of? So you must have to have a prior knowledge of something and then you choose what course of action you, you're going to take mm -hmm. depending upon the knowledge or the situation mm -hmm. or, the, or, or the cause or the need that arises. Mm -hmm. So I need God mm -hmm. to give me knowledge. I need God to give me understanding. I need God to enlighten me. Yep. I need God to quicken me by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. I need God's love to be poured out in my heart mm -hmm. so that I can know, act in a, let's say, a right way, a right manner. Yep. That I can know, follow His laws, His dictates. I must need to know His laws. Yes. If I don't know God's laws, mm -hmm. how can I follow them? That's what will I do? That's it. So, there must be a divine intervention. Your will cannot bring about any action anyway. Only God's will is free. When God will a thing, it will happen. But I can will, I can will to be here today, but I cannot make that happen. I can choose to be here, but I cannot make myself to be here of my own, of my own doing. It depend, I'm dependent upon, as I said, various circumstances that must align themselves together yes. that allow me to be here. Mm -hmm. My will doesn't give me the power to do anything. Nope. My will is dependent upon mm -hmm. some external force. Yeah. Ah, let's say internal force. Mm -hmm. If we can look at it from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. According to psychology today, scientists have investigated the concept of, human, of the human agency at the level of neurosecretary and some findings have been taken as evidence that conscious decisions are not truly free. Let's read it again. Mm -hmm. According to Psychology Today, scientists have investigated the concept of human agency at the level of neurosecretary, they mean the, the like brain waves, mm -hmm. and some findings have been taken as evidence that conscious decisions are not truly free. Free will skeptics argue that, that the subjective sense of free will is an illusion. Yet many scholars, as well as other people, still profess a belief in free will, even if they acknowledge that choices are partially shaped by forces outside of one control. So they say that they still accept it, but they, un but they still admit and confess that, that choices are shaped by forces Outside of one control, which is true. That's psychology. That is sociology. That is that is natural thinking, natural wisdom. Consider how the scripture responds to free will. First scripture we're gonna look at is Proverbs 16, 1 to 9. This is how Proverbs can deal with the, the concept of free will. The preparation of the heart belongs to man. See that? But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. You can prepare, mm -hmm. but God gives the answer. Mm -hmm. All the ways of a man appear in his own eyes. 
but the Lord is the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Mm -hmm. See, whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. you must give it to God and then your thoughts mm -hmm. will be established. Yeah. Your work, Lord, I want to achieve, I want to do. Mm -hmm. Give me ideas. Mm -hmm. Show me the way. Mm -hmm. What path should I take? Let me make the right choices or make the right decisions. Yeah. Let me use holy or righteous strategies. Mm -hmm. Just strategies. Yeah. Let me please you. Mm -hmm. In all my ways, I will acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. uh, in all my ways, I am acknowledging you. Direct my path. Mm -hmm. That's what he's trying to say to you. Commit your work to the Lord and your thoughts should be established. The Lord has made all for himself. Remember? It's God has made all for himself. Mm -hmm. Yes, the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. <laughs> Though the joint forces now will go unpunished. Yeah. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. Now this is what this is what this is very important. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. When a man ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Mm -hmm. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenue without justice. Now this is also important. Mm -hmm. This is the crowning thought. <laughs> a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So I can plan all I want, mm -hmm. but it's the Lord that bring the outcome or determine the outcome. Okay. He direct my step. He give me the right path to walk. You see, another thing. He had to make the path move. Yep. There are obstacles in my way. Yep. Sin is against me. Sin is against me. Mm -hmm. God, must, God must make the path straight. I cannot see the future. No, no. I cannot see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I cannot even see five minutes from now. Yep. <laughs> so I plan my way, mm -hmm. but God direct my steps. December when I was going to Barbados, we were we had to wear the mask for to get on the airplane, mm -hmm. and we had to do all these PCR tests. And I was saying to myself, "Hmm, we wear the mask, and they demand that you wear a mask, mm -hmm. but what about the plane crashing?" Mm -hmm. I said, "You can you can make all provisions." And take all six precautions for one thing when something else totally unexpected could happen that would void everything else that you, every other thing that you have done. That's it. You have no control over life. Yeah. You plan for one thing and something else happens. So I say, Lord, you will be done. Yeah. My life is in your hands. So I cannot frustrate myself over one thing. When there's so many other variables that I do not even consider or know about. Amen. You plan your way. Give it everything over to God. And let Him direct your steps. Amen. You prepare. Mm -hmm. But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Amen. I prepare my message. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit will let me speak what He wants me to say. There are many times I want to say it and I don't get a chance to say it. But you must prepare. Proverbs 16, 33. The lot is cast in the lap. But it's every decision is from the Lord. So you cast the die. Yeah. But what it rolls to and turns up is from the Lord. That's it. So you, you, can, you can choose to do one thing, mm -hmm. as I say, but the outcome is from the Lord. You cast the lot, mm -hmm. the decision is, is of the Lord. According to his purpose and his will. See, his will will be done. That is why man's will is not free. God is the only person that has a free will. Amen. He chooses to do what he will in heaven and in earth. Amen. Among the armies of men. Yes, Lord. The armies in the heavens. Amen. He does whatever he wills. Amen. Or whatever he chooses. Yes. Psalms 37 verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. Mm -hmm. So uh, the steps 
of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. We must depend upon God. Hallelujah. God orders my step. In fact, God has ordered my step from all eternity. God has predetermined my steps, my walking, my doings. See, the work that I'm doing for him now, he has already predetermined. He has called me to do something. To preach the gospel, to teach the gospel. He has predetermined beforehand. And he knew exactly what he wanted me to say. The amount of people who I'm supposed to reach. You know, that's why I don't worry myself about how many people listen to what I have to say. I know that whoever God wants me to, to speak to will hear. You know, some people want to reach millions. Mm -hmm. You know, they take pride in their, like, they like, let's say their Facebook account or their Twitter account. Oh, you know, I have so many, I have so many people that, that, that listen to me. I get so many likes. Mm -hmm. And they take pride in that. Even that is controlled by God. I get to understand that they have people that minister to kings, mm -hmm. they minister to presidents, they minister to governors, they minister to the intellectuals, mm -hmm. and they have some that goes out in the highways and the byways. Mm -hmm. You see, remember we, we, we read in Matthew, mm -hmm. and when he said to the servants, mm -hmm. go out in the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Because the king, son was going to marry, mm -hmm. and he had sent invitation mm -hmm. to all the, mm -hmm. the dignitaries, the ones that are worthy, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they made excuses. Mm -hmm. But actually, Jesus was talking about himself. Mm -hmm. That is a parable. It's a parable of the Father. Right. The Heavenly Father has sent First, he sent prophets, he sent priests to the household of Israel. They took those servants and they killed them. So the Israel had killed the prophets and the priests, killed them off. And then finally, the, the king sent his son. He says, all things are ready. Come to the feast. The gospel is now here. The law has been fulfilled in Christ. Here is the wedding feast. Come. Come and dine. Come. Come unto me. All that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. He made the world. The world was created by him. And he came to the world and the world did not know him. They say he came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to so that gave him power to become sons of God, not because of the will of the flesh or the will of man but by the will of God. So when he came, they would not receive him. So he says, go out in the highways and abide it and compel them to come in. So some of us will reach the ones that are in the highways, in the byways, the lowly ones, mm -hmm. the insignificant ones, the ones that are hurting, the ones that nobody wants to speak to or talk to. Some of us have to go and minister to these ones. Amen. Because they are also worthy mm -hmm. of the kingdom. Amen. But what? Remember, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, mm -hmm. and he delights in his ways. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to understand. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose God, he chose me. And we boast. Mm -hmm. I was a Christian for 40 years. You know, I, I accepted Christ as Savior mm -hmm. when I was 20. And I've been serving Him for 40 years. Mm -hmm. We boast in these things. But He's the one that called us. Yeah. It's not by might, it's not by power. power. You cannot keep yourself. He says, He shall keep in perfect peace mm -hmm. when we keep our mind stayed on Him. He's the one that keeps us. Hallelujah. 